Hi there, Serve Shapiro with the Dr. Vax channel, and today we're going to learn how to turbocharge your printer, how to make it run much, much faster. I printed this beautiful calibration cat. This is a 2X. I'll show you a picture in a minute in much more detail at three times normal speed, and it's a beautiful print. So stay tuned and let's learn something together. The keys to printing very, very fast is you need to ensure that number one, your printer frame is very stable because the faster you go to print, the more vibration you may cause and the more vibration, the more likely you are to get ghosting and other artifacts on your print. There's no ghosting at all on this print. The only artifact at all is I probably should have had one more perimeter because I can see the infill a little bit. This print is extremely clean. Let's look up at a larger picture of this. You'll see the top edges are very, very sharp. The overhang is beautiful. There's a little tiny bit of stringing, but not too much. The negative spaces are clean. This is a beautiful print. This was printed on an Ender 5 at 100 millimeters per second as the base print speed. So let's look at how I did that. Well, the first thing you'll see here is that there is a dramatic difference in print speed based on overall slicer settings. So we go from 239 minutes down to 65 minutes to print the same print. The first set of changes are pretty obvious. We change the layer height, the amount of fill, then we increase the speed, then we turn off acceleration and jerk. And let's go through these in a bit more detail. But before we do, let's look what I did physically to the printer to enable higher print speeds. You'll see here a picture of a Prusa i3 MK3 on the left and of the Ender 5 on the right. Now let's watch a short video together. You'll notice on the Ender 5, the print bed does not move back and forth. It only moves up and down. That keeps the overall print much more stable because you have many less Z movements, or at least large Z movements, than you have X and Y movements. And in particular, if you have Z hop off, you have very few, if any, Z movements when you're printing a particular level. On the other hand, if you look at the Prusa i3 MK3, that print bed is moving back and forth continually. Now the Prusa prints very, very fast because overall the components are excellent. But the $750 printer and the Ender 5 is a $350 printer. Now I did make some modifications to the Ender 5. The first modification here you can see on this picture is I replaced the couplers and the Bowden tube with a Capricorn tube, which is much more precise, also allows printing at higher temperatures and much better couplers. You also see I have an easy ABL bed leveling kit. Now you can level the bed of a printer manually and get it perfect. This just makes it a little easier. The more level the bed of the print, the more likely that your print will stick very well to that bed You'll get less movement while you're printing, and if you're printing very fast, that's important. Next, you'll see I have a CME CNC Easy R Struder Extruder. In my opinion, this is the most significant change to allow me to print on my Ender 5 consistently at 100 millimeters per second. And the reason is when you're printing faster, you need to push more filament more quickly. The standard extruder from Creality is, is quite good, but it's not in the same class as, let's say, a direct extruder used on the Prusa. The CME CNC Easy R Struder is a relatively easy upgrade. There's a video um, on this channel, and it allows you to push filament much more reliably from your extruder to your hot end. Finally, and this might look insignificant, but I don't believe it is. 
This is a little part I got off Thingiverse. I'll include a link down below that I printed that holds the Z screw more stable. That means there's even less movement of that print bed. A side effect is by holding that Z screw more stable, when you turn off the power of your printer on the Ender 5, the print bed has a habit of falling. This tends to keep that from happening. And finally, and this might not be obvious, when you print faster, you need higher temperatures. Why? You're pushing more filament. You're going from one point of the print to the other. You need to ensure that plastic stays at temperature. One way to do that is to start a little bit hotter. I'm printing Matter Hackers Build Series PLA, and I'm printing it at 210 degrees Celsius. Now, let's go through and compare some slicer settings. In this particular configuration, I'm on the normal profile, the default normal profile from Kira. It's a 0.15 millimeter layer height, 20% fill. This basic speed is 60 millimeters per second. And you can see here that this print would take three hours and 59 minutes. By changing to a 0.2 millimeter layer height and only 10% infill, but leaving the speeds per the same, I dropped this to two hours and 12 minutes. And if you look back at this print, it still looks really quite good, really very beautiful. Part of it is the Matter Hacker Build Series PLA does a real nice job of hiding layers. Next, I increased my print speed to 100 millimeters per second. And I did that for both the basic print speed and the infill print speed. And then I let Kira calculate the rest of the speeds. That dropped my overall print time to one hour and 49 minutes. Finally, I did something that may not be obvious. I turned off acceleration jerk control. That tells the slicer that it shouldn't attempt to slow down the print in order to keep from vibrating the printer. Let it go as fast as it can go. Now, because the Ender 5 is a box style frame, because that bed is not moving back and forth, this had little effect on print quality. And that dropped my speed all the way down to one hour and five minutes. Now I did make one other change, which is a change that I normally make in all my prints. And for combing, I set it to not in skin. So, if we go back and we look once again at the graph, we'll see that by making some modifications to the printer to ensure the extruder can extrude filament successfully at higher speeds by increasing the temperature of the print and by making a series of speed changes and then finally by turning off acceleration jerk control, I was able to print this in about a third of the time. Now, what's the side effect? The side effect is depending on your printer, you will lose quality. But in my particular case, these combinations of features allowed me to print a beautiful print in a third of the time. Okay, folks, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. If you did, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, share this channel with, with other people that might be interested in this information. Thanks so much and have a great day.